Lord, you are my shelter. Now, what do you call people who believe in things that are not there? The answer is mad people. Because although the Bible says that faith is a gift, it is not the gift of stupidity. You put your trust in someone if you are sure that they are real and true. Faith is always a response to truth and reality. God shines a light into this world so that we can see truth, so that we can see reality and respond to it. Faith is the only appropriate response to a God who is real and who has revealed himself and made himself known. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word. Over the last several weeks, we've been talking about faith in God and how to exercise faith. Uh, and we've just been building up uh, on the subject. And uh, last in our last program, uh, we uh, gave a summary or I try to put everything together and say, you know, these are the steps or the, these are the ways in which we uh, actually exercise faith in God so that we can see God at work in our lives. Uh, in this concluding message in this series, we want to just share some, some practical things on uh, how we can have strong faith. What, what goes into developing strong faith in God? And, uh, you know, this is something... Uh, that is accessible or available to all of us. Uh, Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3, he is commending the th believers in Thessalonica, and he says that their, your faith grows exceedingly. That means here were people who, you know, who are walking in love, uh, who are serving people, and in, in, in all of this, their faith in God was in, in a continuous state of growth. It was growing stronger and stronger. And so we must also journey, as the scripture tells us, from faith to faith. The implication is you're growing from one level of faith on to the next level of faith. So we must keep moving from faith to faith and, and keep growing in that. So how do we uh, grow and develop strong faith uh, and, and become, come to a place where we know that God will work in our lives and we're ready at all times to uh, exercise faith in God? And I just want to share several different pointers, uh, that are things that will help us uh, uh, strengthen and develop strong faith in God. First, of, co of course, is to uh, be established in the Word of God. You know, we've said that faith, uh, as we've learned, uh, faith is, is, is conceived and it's nurtured uh, and is sustained by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. So uh, stay in the Word. Know that God's Word is truth. Uh, know what the Word of God says concerning different areas of your life. Uh, be established in the truth of the Word of God. Be established when God has said. Keep in mind that every promise of God is a revelation of the will of God. You know, many people say, what is God's will? Well, God's Word is God's will. Uh, every promise is a revelation of His will because uh, the reason He promised is because he willed for you to have it. And so the, the, the promise of God reveals the will of God. And, and so when you know the will of God, the promises of God, you also know the will of God. And faith is, uh, you're able to exercise faith where the will of God is known. Once you know this is the will of God, you can go after it with strong faith. So faith in God is very important. Uh, be established uh, in the word of God. Uh, 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 and, and let the Word of God sustain your faith. Uh, a second important part uh, of uh, developing strong faith uh, is to know certain things. Uh, it's, it's important to have a revelation of certain truths that really strengthen your inner person. For instance, you need to know the reality 
of your redemption in Christ. You need to know that you are redeemed. The devil has no place over you, no authority over you, no claim over you. You need to know that. Otherwise, most believers, you know, they don't know it. So they either tolerate the devil and they just accommodate what the devil is doing, or sometimes they even worse. Uh, what the devil is doing, they ascribe it to God, you know. Why? Because they don't know that they're actually redeemed from uh, the evil work of the enemy and that they're redeemed from the powers of darkness and that they've been translated into God's kingdom. They're not aware of it. And, and, and so uh, they don't know how to stand up against uh, what the, um, the things that the devil does. And the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy in their lives. Uh, and they don't know that what's happening in their life is actually the work of the devil and that they're actually redeemed from it. They don't have to put up with it. So that's very important to know your, the reality of your redemption in Christ. Know also the reality, reality of the new creation. So not only are we redeemed or brought out of the powers of darkness, but we are new create creatures in Christ. Now, when we say we are new creatures in Christ, we have a new identity. And in Christ, God has blessed us and God has done amazing things by putting us in Christ. Now, you need to know that because that becomes a solid basis for your faith as you operate out of who you are in Christ. That you are in Christ, you're a new creation in Christ, you're highly favored by God, you're beloved of God, you're accepted in the beloved, you are qualified you've, uh, to partake in all that God has for his people in Christ. You're seated uh, with Jesus in heavenly realms. In Christ, you are in a place of authority and dominion. And you need to know the reality of who you are in Christ because that will make you strong in your faith. You also need to know, the, you know, connected to this is the, your righteousness in Christ. The fact that you are accepted before God. You know, uh, uh, anytime we walk with this feeling of condemnation and guilt, then we cannot have strong faith. The Bible tells us, you know, 1 John 3, 21, uh, Beloved, if a heart condemn us, then we have no confidence toward God. We cannot have faith in God. We cannot be confident uh, in faith in God. Uh, if we are walking in a sense of condemnation uh, and the best way to overcome condemnation, a feeling of condemnation, guilt and shame is by knowing that you are the righteousness of God. It's by knowing the reality of your righteousness. You have been justified and made righteous. God has declared you righteous and you need to embrace that truth in your heart and give no place for condemnation, guilt and shame uh, in your life because condemnation ruins your faith. It hinders you from having strong faith in God. So know the reality of your righteousness in God. Know the reality of the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in you. Uh, understand that the Spirit of God is in you so that when you exercise your faith, the Holy Spirit is empowering you. His power is actually going out of your life that accompanies your faith. If you want to conceive it, uh, look at it this way. Your faith is a conduit through which the power of the Holy Spirit flows out of you. So remember what Jesus said in John 7, he, verses 37 to 39. He said, those who believe in him out of the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. Uh, and he was speaking of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. So the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit he is dwelling in you and he wants to release his presence and power through you. But how will that happen? What, what was the channel through which his presence and power flows? Remember, the power of God accompanies your faith. So your faith is important. And, and as you exercise your faith, the very power of the Holy Spirit is flowing through you. So the more you understand, the more you know the, the reality of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in you and through you, the more encouraged you'll be to step out in faith because you're not doing it alone. Remember that every time you step out in faith, the power of the Holy Spirit is accompanying you. So that's why in the Bible in Acts 6, uh, it talks about Stephen being a man full of faith and power. These are two components that go together, faith and power. So where there is great faith, you will see great power at work. The power of the Holy Spirit accompanies your faith. So know the reality of the power of the Holy Spirit. Another important thing to know is to know the authority of the name of Jesus. 
that has been wasted in you. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has given us a delegated power. He has given us the power of attorney, and he has told us to use his name. You use his name when you pray to the Father. Jesus told us that. He said, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So he's given you the power of attorney to go to the Father on his, in his name. And uh, uh, he's given us the authority to use his name against the works of darkness, against things that we contend with in this world. So use my name, he said. In my name, you cast out devils. In my name, you lay hands on the sick. In my name, you do these things. So when we use the name of Jesus, what we're really saying is, I am here standing in his place on his behalf, representing him to do what he would do if he were here himself. That's what it means when you say, in Jesus' name. So when we say, in Jesus' name, we are acting on his behalf. We are standing in his place. We are representing him and we are here to do what he would do if he were in that place. So that's what it means when we say in Jesus' name. It's, it's, it's powerful. It carries uh, the very power and authority of Christ himself when you say in Jesus' name. So you need to understand the power and the authority of that name, how to use that name correctly, and how to uh, you know, step out in faith in that name. Now, when you have faith in that name, in the name of Jesus, we will see results. Remember in Acts chapter 3, verse 16, after the lame man has been healed, Peter is explaining to the crowd, he's saying, his name, faith in his name, faith given to us from God has made this man whole. So he's attributing it to the authority of the name of Jesus, and he's talking about faith in that name that brings about that, that brought about healing to that lame man. And, in, and, and similarly, we need to know the power, the authority that's in that name and our right to use that name that encourages our faith, empowers our faith. Uh, in addition to these things, it's important for us to maintain uh, and always speak in line with the Word of God. Remember in the series on faith, we emphasize uh, the importance of saying, the importance of speaking, as the Lord Jesus taught us. He said, if you have faith, you will say. So it's important to keep your saying or your speaking aligned to the Word of God. In every situation, say what God's Word says concerning that situation. Stay in alignment to the Word in your speaking. And as you keep your, uh, your speaking aligned to the Word of God, it's going to keep your faith strong. When we speak defeat, when we speak failure, when we speak hopelessness, that will, is just going to diminish our faith. It's just going to weaken our faith. But we need to keep speaking the Word of God, uh, keep your speaking aligned to the Word of God, and that will strengthen your faith. A few other things that really uh, encourage uh, the, the development of strong faith uh, is to keep a clear conscience. You know, like we said earlier, uh, if our conscience is not clear, uh, if uh, there, we feel condemned ourselves, then uh, we cannot have strong faith. So it's important to keep a clear conscience. That means you know that in your, in your heart, in your motivations, and in, in, in the things that you're doing, that your conscience is clear before God. Uh, and, and Paul writes about this in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 19. Uh, he says, he talks about people who have departed from a clear conscience, and they have shipwrecked their faith. They've destroyed their own faith because they didn't keep a clear conscience. They didn't maintain a clear conscience. So a clear conscience is important to keep strong faith. So maintain that. Uh, keep a walk in love. Maintain a pure conscience that undergirds strong faith. And so walk in love because faith is, ex uh, is expressed through love. Uh, Galatians 5 and verse 6 says, faith works by love. So keep your heart in love. You know, don't let any kind of evil, bitterness, uh, uh, jealousy, anything that is contrary to love, don't let those things come into your heart. Because if those things come into your heart, that means love isn't there. And faith cannot work if there is no love. So keep your heart in love. Stay in love. If at any point you feel you've stepped out of that place of love, 
of walking in the love of God, get back right there. Say, God, I'm sorry. I was, uh, you know, I got into hate or got into any kind of bitterness. God, I want to walk in love. I'm going to release forgiveness. I'm going to uh, maintain a heart of love because faith works through love. And finally, keep exercising your faith. The way to grow strong in faith is to keep using it. Keep walking by faith in every situation, in every circumstance. Because remember, faith is like a muscle. Uh, the more you use it, the stronger it becomes. If you don't use it, it atrophies, it weakens, uh, it, it goes away. So keep using your faith and you will continue to grow stronger in your faith. So we've just enumerated uh, several different uh, uh, things that you and I can do in our life to make sure that we are developing and growing stronger in our faith. All these things are important, uh, are essential ingredients uh, that help nurture strong faith and help us develop strong faith in God. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in the Word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2019 for the one-year Certificate in Theology and Christian Ministry, two-year Diploma in Theology and Christian Ministry, three-year Bachelor's Degree in Theology and Christian Ministry, short-term Bible courses for three months in Varanasi, UP, from September to December in English and Hindi. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College or call us at 99854-548-99. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA. We trust that this telecast today was of encouragement to you as we bring this series on faith to a close. Uh, we've touched on several different aspects concerning faith. And on the program today, we just uh, try to uh, uh, bring uh, in some uh, essential ingredients that are needed to develop strong faith in God. And I want to encourage you to grow in all of these things that we've been speaking about. Some of you may be familiar with these things. You've probably heard it before, and that's great. Uh, it's always good to be reminded. It's always good to be refreshed. For some of you, these things may be totally new. You've probably never heard of these things. And and, you know, you may not get everything in the first time you hear it, but we want to encourage you to keep coming back and, uh, to these messages that are available to you online. Keep listening to them over and over again and, and, and grow in these things and, uh, until you see yourself walking by faith, that that's the way you live. You live by faith in God. You've got no other option. You've got no other choice. Everything is done by faith in God because we walk by faith not by sight. And God has called us to live by faith in Him. I want to take a moment just to uh, pray with you uh, before we close. Some of you watching this program right at this very moment uh, might be faced with a certain need in your life and you would like us to pray with you. I may not know your exact need, but that's okay. God knows it. And I'm just going to extend faith towards you, towards your situation, saying, God, whatever their need is, I'm asking you to meet it. And as I pray, expect God's touch to come onto your life, whether it's healing for your body or uh, something else in your life that you want God to do and touch. Expect with me. Believe God with me. And I believe that as we pray, God will work wonders in your life. Uh, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to pray together like this. I thank you for those listening, God. Wherever they are, Whatever their need is, Father, I'm asking in the name of your Son, Jesus, even as they bring their need before you, Lord God, touch them right now and release a miracle in response to their prayer for their need of God. I also pray for those who might be sick, suffering, and hurting as they're watching this program. Lord, right this moment, in the name of Jesus, let them receive complete healing that every work of darkness be broken off of their bodies and minds. Let every tormenting spirit leave. 
Let every oppressive work of the enemy be broken off their lives this moment. Let them receive your touch over their lives. Father God, I pray for other needs that may have been spoken to you at this moment. Let them know that you have heard and your answer is for them. Thank you, O oh Father, for doing this. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. We always encourage you to uh, visit our church website and make use of all the free resources uh, that we may have made available to you. you know, we have people from over 150 nations around the world who come and use the resources on our church website. And we're excited about that, that we could make these resources available uh, to, uh, to nations around the world. And people come, they download our books, the sermons, the videos, uh, other resources that are there. So we want to encourage you to do the same thing. Grow strong in your walk with God and share these resources with other people freely so that they also can be blessed and enriched. Uh, write to us, let us know how these things are encouraging your life. It'll encourage us to hear from you. So until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. I will instruct you, I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he will not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him. And then here's God's promise. He says he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in its season. God's promise to prosper us. He's also promised to guide us, to give us wisdom, to give us the understanding that we need to succeed.